LA versus New York. Which city should you move to if you're Asian? Now, actually, this question gets posed on the internet a lot. And in this video, we are going to give you our answer once and for all. Yeah, honestly, you see this question posted so often. We just got to break it down from the micro to the mid to the macro. Because the truth is, Andrew, as much as people ask this online behind a faceless avatar, we don't know the answer. Dude. Each individual is different. So I don't really understand why people are just asking other strangers this question without getting to know this person. However, what we can provide for you in this video is the framework on how to figure it out. These are the things you have to think about when you're thinking about moving anywhere. And by the way, yes, moving environments, moving cities can definitely change your life in very drastic ways. We all understand this. So please, if you're excited by this video or you're going to find it useful, hit that like button right now and click subscribe. David, let's get into it. Yeah, I know people really want to see, you know, taco versus bagel, tank top versus black jacket. But at the end of the day, guys, we already made that video. We made one a few years ago called East Coast Asians versus West Coast Asians. It hit like 2 million views. So if you want to see like those micro nuance things that get a lot of views, this is not the place for it. We are actually going to be breaking down the calculus and the math behind it. Andrew, we got to take a look at the macro view. When you are picking a city or a coast to move to or to settle down in, Andrew, you're essentially picking a Pokemon starter pack. The blue deck, the red deck, the green deck. This is going to provide you the fundamental basis of what you have to work with now of course there's going to be a lot of micro re reads within that but basically andrew long story short the geography matters right for mm -hmm. example the majority of people in america live near the east coast the east coast is also closer to europe Ooh. you're gonna get a lot more people who know their european ties whether they're like yeah i'm proud to be italian or yeah i'm proud to be irish yeah. you know you're just gonna get a lot more of that vibe you a lot more people from the middle east the caribbean biggie's mom was jamaican mm -hmm. that's just because look at the geography of where it's at okay and on the west coast california used to belong to mexico that's why there's so many Mexicans and Latin Americans along the West Coast. You know what there else is a lot of, Andrew, on the West Coast? Huh. Asians. Wow. Because they're right across the Pacific Ocean. You go to Hawaii, you go to Alaska, there are native-looking peoples there. They look Asian. Yeah. I mean, I think the short answer is a lot of Asians move to California, guys. However, the answer is much more complicated than that. I will say this. If you are looking for Asian pockets or Asian communities in any state that you go to, look for the Asian supermarket and the cluster of restaurants around it. And from there, if you're ever being lonely and you find yourself in a situation like oh, there's no Asians out there that's where the Asians would be yeah and by the way guys I'm not saying the west coast and the east coast are not nuanced I know that Philly New York and Boston they tend to have their own vibe anything yeah. below Philly is its own vibe yeah. honestly we're from the west coast and Seattle gets sort of taken out of the west coast energy because it's the pacific northwest it snows up there yeah and I say when it comes to moving to the west or the east coast don't necessarily move for the coast find a city or two that you really enjoy and move for those reasons like I like New York, but do I love everywhere else around New York? I love New York. That's what you, all. What I'm are saying. you trying to say about Beantown? Bean Town's cool. I like Boston. All right, Philly's let's cool. get straight to the micro, Andrew. This is our next read. We're going to skip over the mid. We're going to go back to it, and I'll explain why in a second, Andrew. What is your character? What Pokemon are you out of the red <laughs> deck or the blue deck or the green deck? What's your industry? What type of Asian are you? What are your larger identities that sort of like make up your persona beyond being an Asian? And this is going to be relevant. I'll just give you a clue right now, Andrew. If you're a chef... Asian and you want to rep your cuisine, New York is going to seem like not a 10 out of 10, but it's going to seem like a much stronger pick. Right, right, right. Uh, I would say essentially in the micro, it's asking like in NBA terms, what is your wingspan? What is your height? What is your standing vertical? Right? How fast are you? What right? are your micro stats, right? right? As an individual. These are your tools that you're working with in, in a regular person sense. What are your finances? Even how do you look or what type of Asian are you? What are well, your goals? What kind yeah. of industries are you in? Of course, I'm, everybody wants to make money, but how do you want to make that money? Do you want to make it outside of the system within yeah. an institution, a hybrid and, approach? And let me ask another question. How much do you like to party? And who do you want to party with? Because there are different cities that have different party scenes. And would you agree with me that generally in life, Andrew, like whatever Pokemon you're born, it's difficult to shape shift into another Pokemon, but you can level up to a different evolution of yeah. that same Pokemon. Yeah. And also, maybe, I don't know if this is how it works in the Pokemon game, but different Pokemons perform better under certain circumstances. Like, I'm just going to make one up. Weedle, you know, maybe it's better in the ground. 
But you got to be in you the should, ground. Because that's the natural uh, habitat maybe of the Weedle, Weedle. If Weedle's flying through the air, I don't know what Weedle's doing. I mean, I think it matters even what type of Asian you are. For example, if I was like Mong, right? Uh, like... I would want to be in Fresno or I would want to be in Minnesota if what I'm looking to achieve has to do with pinging around or like galvanizing other people with the similar shared experiences. Right. I mean, I would also say, yeah, you could look at Dallas too. That has a growing Southeast Asia. And anywhere where the, for example, if you're Hmong. Oh, Lao, any, Lao population yeah, in any, Dallas. Anywhere where there's a Lao population, a, a heavy Southeast Asian particular population might not be bad for, you know, smaller groups like Hmong people just because, you know, that, that that's the culture that you're closer to. Inner, we knew a Korean guy from New York who opened up a chain of like hipster coffee shops in Atlanta. But the thing is, if you were another type of Asian other than Korean, I don't know if you're moving from New York to Atlanta, but it's because Atlanta has a huge Korean population that maybe like needed cooler, hipster, artistic, artisanal things from New York. Yeah. So that is going to like play into it. And that was based off the specific Pokemon character with his own individual metrics and traits that he had. Yeah. Surprisingly, guys, Oregon has a lot of Thai restaurants. I didn't know this until I went to Portland, and they love Thai food out there. Yeah, I would say, for example, Andrew, just to give a personal example, when we were living in Los Angeles and we wanted to switch to doing more food content, it was much easier for us to live in the San Gabriel Valley 626 where all the shop owners were Asian. Not only that, the majority of that Asian was Chinese. Mm. So we were able to, like basically film at food spots much, much, much easier than we would have if we lived in West Side L.A. Right. So that even depended on the positioning within the city, Andrew, which brings us to our midpoint. If we were to chop each city, which is the macro, by the way, and then we have already determined who we are in the micro, what character we are. If we were to chop a city into 16 grids, Andrew, most people are going to live in three, four, or five of them. Like you mean like their favorite restaurants or their gym or where they live is probably within four or five squares of each other yeah for example Andrew, if you're a the mayor of a city or you're a food reviewer it's your job to care about all 16 slices or 16 tiles on that grid yeah but the majority of people do not right so this is like the part where it's like okay i've to pick the coast i've picked the city now i'm picking who i am or i'm like aware of who i am self-awareness and then now boom we're picking neighborhoods and industries yeah and neighborhoods really matters for example if you live in los angeles county which is very very large Okay, Los Angeles County has multiple cities in it. Some people would say it's like 32 grids. If you live in the west side, Sawtell, right, very rarely are you going to 626. You might go there maybe once a week. That's already fairly often. But if you go there once a week, you're spending probably 70% of your life or 60% of your life in West LA. Yeah. If you live in Brooklyn, New York, like even Williamsburg, or if you live in Park Slope, or, or obviously even Bensonhurst, you're probably going to be spending 60 to 70% of your life in Somewhere in Brooklyn. Yeah. Let's say, for example, Andrew, we were to break LA into 16 grids. Probably, realistically, only four or five of those tiles make up the entertainment industry. But it seems like the majority of people moving to LA, they move there for those four or five tiles. Mm. So there you have it, Andrew. The micro, the mid, the macro. That is a way that you can analyze if your Pokemon is going to fit in whatever starter pack doing whatever projects and missions that is literally the best way to break it down and i think that you could take this and apply it internationally you can do it and apply it within the country but it's just basically a mental equation you have to decide whether or not uh what is the mathematical likelihood you're going to have a successful life in a given place yeah man we were just playing mario kart on switch the other day at our friend's restaurant and I just realized how advanced it got because you can pick your wheels and your vehicle and your character. Now, actually, all the characters, I think, are equal. But when it came to picking your vehicle for Mario Kart and the landscape, it really mattered. No, no, not all the characters are equal, Andrew. Bowser came with different attributes. Oh, yo, you're told. right. So then you are already, when you're picking your character, trying to find a balance or whatever fits you as a player. Because yeah. maybe you're like the one that, yo, I like to go fast, so I just need better traction. Or no, I'm just really good at steering, so I don't need that much speed because I'm just going to avoid everything. Yeah, I think that when you take a look at video games, a lot of people are able to make these reads because it's breaking down the math 
to a simple enough equation. But when it comes to like, where am I going to be happier in my life? That's when it starts to get very convoluted and overly complex. And that's why we introduced this calculus to simplify for people. Right. All right. So let's just get into individual people that we know. Andrew, for example, if you want to be a chef and you want to like represent your cuisine almost in a United Nations type of way, you should probably be where the United Nations is. Somewhere in New York, right? Because that's the best place to like, for example, we know um, Helen Wynn from Seattle. She opened up Saigon Social in New York to sort of like do a mixture between Vietnamese and French cuisine, but still make it authentic and uplift the eyes of the Vietnamese cuisine sort of like in America or in New York. New York's the place that she should do it. Yeah, and we know that there's a lot of like chef teams and chef groups out here. There's like Asian food mafia and all these different like, uh, there's a lot of community between the Asian chefs out here. Chefs in general, but I want to point out particularly Asian chefs. And by the way, guys, I know if you have a family, the calculus changes because you're not just living for yourself. You're living for like your, yeah. your, your spouse and your kids. But anyway, moving on, Andrew, what if you want to be in like Hollywood or do anything media related? You probably would want to do what our friend Leo Levitate Style did and and move to LA. I mean, listen, you can act in New York, for example. There's different cities like Atlanta that still might have some opportunities. But if you are truly just trying to maximize your opportunities and you have the means to move to LA and you have the freedom to move to LA, you should always give it a shot if you're trying to go into Hollywood. I would also say if you're trying to be a social media star and you are looking for more people to collaborate with in a social media sense, like for example, TikTok and Instagram, I don't think LA is a bad choice either. That's where all of that kind of culture is. That's what I have noticed. A lot of the more lifestyle vloggers moving to New York to show off like the city and stuff like that. So it goes to show you it's different. One is more content creation. If you want to interview wild people and ratchet lives, then go to LA. If you want to just show people how sick the coffee you had was this morning, go to New York. Um, Andrew, what about an Ivy League or like a high tier corporate type of Asian guy? Where should they go? Probably SF or New York, right? But LA is starting to get a lot more jobs for somebody who was like really concerned with like elite colleges and stuff like that. Yeah, if you're an Ivy League person and you like to have constantly intellectual conversations with people, I think New York is a good way, good place to be. Listen, a lot yeah, of people- Yeah, DC as well, a little boring though, Boston a little whatever. Uh, a lot of people from very good colleges move to New York. So you're gonna meet a lot of those other people. And I'm sure a lot of your college mates also moved to New York if you went to the Ivy Leagues because they're based on the East Coast. What if you like AZN things? We're talking Whoa. about import models, ABGs, you know, this type of... It, it, if you don't know what AZN is, I just throw up some photos, but if you yeah. watch the fun bros, you probably know what it is. Yeah. I would say Vegas. Vegas became, Whoa. over time, I think it always was a good AB, you know, AZN spot to be. But now it, like, jumped to number one on the list up there with OC, maybe San Jose. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say my top picks for this would be Houston, in no particular order. Houston, Vegas, San Jose, OC. Rosemead. LA as well, <sighs> particularly maybe San Gabriel Valley. Uh, and on the East Coast, if I had to say, uh, uh, I think parts of Boston. The, the, Actually, Philly and Boston over New York. The Asian neighborhoods in Boston. Yeah, Quincy. And uh, New York has some too, of course. Yeah, but the New York version of ASEAN is definitely more like, I guess, uh, mixed with FOB, right? Yeah. It's FOB ASEAN. Uh, moving on, Andrew. What if you just want to be someone who's just around really level-headed people and you're not concerned with the litness or the, the wild roller coaster of life? You know where would be a great place? Seattle. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of good Asian food in Seattle, a lot of good seafood, lots of great uh, pho, actually. A lot of Vietnamese and Filipinos up there. And yeah, I would say, obviously, the way with Seattle's moving, it's becoming more tech-focused. Um, it's almost like a more, less startup version of SF, right? It is, let me be clear, not lit, though. It is not lit in your party Nobody will way. ever, I don't now, even care if you're a party promoter from Seattle, they will not tell you that it's lit compared to another city. Yeah, it's just, uh, you're going to have to go elsewhere to party. Um, if you want to raise a dream-like white picket fence Asian American family where your kid has a best chance at playing D1 sports, I think hands down, I don't even think this is up for dispute, the Bay Area. Yeah. Specifically somewhere like Fremont, Palo Alto, Burling game. Yeah, shout out to Amazing HQ. Follow their Instagram to follow all the upcoming Asian athletes. But for some reason... The Bay Area has all the athletic Asians. Now, maybe it's yeah, because... Yeah, Stephen Kwan, Jeremy Lin, shout out to... Just, the, just so many. many. Yeah, multiple. I mean, we could go down the list. I mean, LA does a pretty good job, too. I don't want to write that off. But yeah, it just seems like the Bay Area, man. They produce all the Asian Maybe athletes. 
Possibly, Eileen and this Gu? is how culture works, Eileen guys. Goo is from the Bay. Perhaps there's no competition from the entertainment industry because despite the Bay in LA being relatively close, there's no entertainment industry in the Bay. It's like all tech and like being Asian American. Yeah. I got one that's very specific. If you're an Asian tech guy and you like to party, I would say LA or New York, not SF because SF's right. party scene is not on the same but level. But even LA is just a more of a recent thing because the convergence of tech and entertainment, consumer tech, yeah. things like uh, Snapchat, Bumble, whatever, Tinder from LA. Andrew, I'm sure we could just list off another 50 character profiles of different Asians. For example, maybe you like hot weather, but you don't like being around a lot of Asians. Maybe Florida's a good place. Seems like a lot of people are moving there, just not Asians. But we got to get into how people can do their own research, right? Because they're sort of like asking the wrong questions because inevitably the way they're asking the question on the internet right now, it leads in all these like micro nuances about like food and stuff like that. Hey guys, uh, I know you don't know me and I don't know you, but can you tell me where to move my entire life? Yeah, it seems, and I'll listen to and, you. And it seems crazy honestly to move for something as arbitrary as like tacos versus pizza dude guys stop asking these questions on the internet please what you should do if you have the means or you have some time what you should do is go meet up with a friend that lives in that city or you go at least visit there for like a week or so well, airbnb is popping right now airbnb yeah. or at least a weekend somehow get out there um before we moved anywhere we also always visited and I think that's the best thing that you can do. Go there for a trip and see how you feel when your feet are on the ground. Yeah, I do think there's other websites. You know, I think they're useful in some ways. Of course, like Reddit, City Data, Quora. But at the end of the day, you really got to get there and you got to go with a mission. Okay, here's another hack. This is kind of funny. And if you made it to the end of this video, here is a little tip. If you're a guy and you care about your dating life, just go set your location in different cities and see which city you feel like you do the best in. And maybe that's right. a and good sign. And this even sign. applies like internationally. Yeah, maybe that's a good sign of where you should visit. Now, I'm not saying that is going to determine everything. It's going to depend on, wow, on how you... Wow, you're saying that's all that guys care no. about. They're going to base where they live the life off the matches. I don't know. I don't know. If people really like you in that city... Maybe you should move there. That's right, all I'm right, saying. Right. It might be emblematic of like a lot of other things. It could be symbolic is all I'm saying. All right, you guys, let us know in the comment section below what you thought of our calculus, our math breakdown of where anybody should live. Like we said, there's the macro starter deck. Then there's who you are in the micro. What's your character? What Pokemon? What level of evolution you are? And then, of course, the mid. Which tiles are you picking? Because each city, each neighborhood is made up of many tiles, and you don't got to live in all of them. Maybe only like 25, 30% of it got to be relevant to you, of course, unless you're the mayor or a food critic. Let us know in the comment section below. Hopefully, this answers a question and moves the discussion along. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.